Hi, my name is Tina and welcome to the CounterPoint Conversation. We're here at NWC and please welcome to Nohit Semi from CEO of Sony Semiconductor in Israel and also Neil Shah, our VP in CounterPoint Research. Welcome and thank you for joining us here at MWC. Thank Nahid. you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, I, we have been following uh, Sony Semi since all day days, right? And uh, we have seen the progress uh, and you have created a very strong niche for yourself in a very difficult and crowded market, which is IoT and especially cellular IoT. So, uh, and we have seen how the transition has been for cellular IoT over the last two decades when it was called M2M, it was all 2G, then 3G, and then I think it really took off with 4G and LPWA coming in. And I know you have been one of the leaders in LPWA technology. So can you talk about how you have seen this transition and how uh, Sony Altair has grown uh, over uh, the period? Yeah, sure. So at the beginning was very difficult. Uh, we started with a standalone 4G uh, product in the, in the broadband space. And we didn't have a 3G support, uh, backward compatibility, which was very important. So at the beginning was extremely difficult. Uh, but then, you know, step by step, uh, we focused on the uh, advanced market in which standalone 4G at that time uh, was needed. Uh, um, at some point, we decided to focus only on IoT. Broadband has become a commodity. Right. And we fo focused all of our resources on IoT. Uh, that was around 2016, almost a decade ago. And since then, we have been developing uh, extremely customized and tailored products for our customers, which uh, resulted uh, in our current position in the market. And uh, how do you see the journey from 4G to LPWA, where you have been uh, bringing out really some good tailored customized products? Yeah, so the beginning of uh, IoT was, uh, from the technology point of view, was uh, category one. Uh, at that time, it was mainly for smart uh, meters. Um, we focused on ultra low power smart meters in Japan, and then expanded into the United States. And then LTM, category M, and Nelvan IoT came. Uh, we migrated the, the, the low power technology that we had on CAT1 to these uh, lower bandwidth uh, technologies, came up with additional uh, functionalities and nice products. And yeah, that's where we are today. So when you uh, talk to your customers and how, what is the process in terms of customizing those and uh, differentiating, right? So what are the key differentiation points when it comes to why customers choose you compared to the big players out there? Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a good uh, question. So we, we listen to our customers um, and our customers, especially in the uh, battery operated uh, devices like water and heat and, and gas, they need, they need to be able to reduce the cost. Uh, uh, and also they need to be able to provide their customers additional services. Um, and that additional services normally comes on the expense of a battery lifetime. So when we came up with uh, extremely low power devices, we could handle both requirements, uh, enabling them to reduce the number of batteries, actually operating the services on batteries and reducing over time the number of batteries, which reduce the total bill of material. Uh, then at a later point, we also added additional uh, functionalities like integrated microcontroller to provide uh, application running on die. Uh, additional radios uh, like uh, sub gigahertz, which is required for um, mesh networking and gateway uh, application. All of these functions are required for these smart metering uh, customers. Following on that, can you share with us how do you see? I mean, you already have all this solution. How do you see this going forward? And 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 where is the growth? Yeah. So uh, smart metering uh, and utilities in in general. Uh, in some sense, it's a kind of a recurrent business. Uh, the lifetime of a meter is, depending on the geography, is between seven years to 15 years, sometimes even more. And as time goes by, 
uh, additional waves of uh, you know driven by utility companies uh, are being deployed with with more functionalities. So in some sense, it's a kind of a recurrent business. Uh, they need to keep deploying, and then after a couple of years, replace with additional with a new model uh, with new functionalities. Uh, so we see that this happening uh, all around the world, actually. Uh, in advanced markets, it's already wave two and coming into wave three in a couple of years. And in the developed uh, markets, then it's just a first uh, a duration of AMI, um, remote metering uh, reading. Yeah. Um, so it's going to continue. Uh, it's going to continue happening in our view. Uh, we are very fortunate that the LTM technology is going to last, you know, as we see in the market, it's going to last for at least maybe between 10 to 20 years, depending on the market. So we can keep shipping to these customers our technologies. And, and in other markets, there will be a transition from 4G to 5G. Here. Do you see any specific markets as you are talking about geography? Um, you know, where, where do you see opportunity uh, more, I guess, replacement versus first time? So uh, typically um, in the more advanced market, there will be a transition. Uh, especially in the electricity space in which higher bandwidth is, is required. Uh, and LTM will keep driving uh, gas and water applications. So in Japan, in the United States, in Australia, uh, these markets, we see the transition happening faster. And in other markets, it will take some uh, more time. It will happen over the next uh, decade. Okay. And uh, talking about bandwidth, uh, you, know, you came up with a very nice white paper, very educating for us analysts. Uh, in comparing LTM with Cat1 base, and obviously there is some misconception in terms of Cat1 base. A lot of analysts like us are projecting it; it will keep, keep on growing, right? But obviously there are when you talk with operators and how we put, do performance testing in your lab, you know, you came up with some findings which uh, reveals a lot about the potential of these technologies in different ways. Yeah, so Cat1 base is. is is a nice technology in the sense that it uh, enables reducing the uh, the cost, but it has some limitations. First, it occupies uh, significantly more bandwidth uh, than the LTM and urban IoT. That bandwidth is required over time to be uh, refarmed for 5G. Uh, and in addition, it uses a single antenna without um, some of the uh, functions that exist in the LTM. And we believe it's uh, less appropriate uh, for stationary devices because of the uh, link budget, which is uh, lower than what you have on, on LTM. Interesting. And uh, as you see the longevity of LTM over the next couple of decades, right? In some market, some market, as you said, would transition to 5G. What, how are you thinking about uh, 5G evolution for the company and your role over there? Yeah, so we will uh, keep providing uh, differentiated products in the low bandwidth space, which is LTM, uh, essentially LTM. And we are also, in the, in the coming uh, time, we will introduce also uh, something for the 5G, uh, specifically for the e uh, uh -huh. Yeah, we, we believe that uh, Cut1 will be replaced by e Cup in some form of the specification, and we will provide competitive and differentiated solutions for this space as well. Brilliant. Any other uh, key applications which you feel you can make a difference in this IoT industry? Uh, like smart metering, you have almost owned that space and customers love you for their products and performance. So what other uh, industries you feel you can make a difference and you feel needs fixing? Sony uh, owns um, for well, most, more than two decades of positioning, you know, Genesis positioning technologies. Um, we leverage the IP and, and the know-how uh, created by Sony in Japan uh, and already implemented in our chipset. And together, we are going to drive the asset tracking market. Uh, I would say the, the ultra-low power battery-operated uh, asset tracking market, right. which in our view has a huge potential. Uh, underutilized potential. Absolutely. Uh, and that will be the next growth engine for us. I completely agree. And with all of these uh, gay economy, with O2O services, right? In India, for example, we have 10 minutes delivery for grocery, 10 minutes for restaurant, right? And all of these 
scooters are driving, all, all the supply chain for those dark stores to deliver all these goods, right? You need to track them. And there are a lot of perishable goods. The cold chain becomes more important. And that is where you have to track them. And I think something like this would be really important. And, and this is in the B2C domain, which is, I would say, by far uh, more developed than the B2B. The B2B is a, is a huge domain, and 99% of the packages worldwide are actually B2B, and they are not connected, uh, unable to trace them. Uh, use cases like inventory management uh, is still, you know, most of the companies are unable to do, and I think that there's a huge potential in that. Um, you know, what? so do you also see this, what technology will be you know, best suited for the, the, the smart, uh, it's cut one four? For asset tracking? For asset tracking. <clears throat> um, yeah, good question. So some of the assets, uh, I would say most of the assets are actually located in the same geography. <laughs> um, so you would need the uh, cellular technology that support is supported in this geography, like United States or India. Uh, and some of the assets are actually traveling globally. Uh, and for that, uh, global devices, you need a global uh, coverage and also good uh, roaming agreements. So I would say these are one of the, some of the challenges that we see in the, in the global uh, supply chain. Uh, on top of that, we need good and global positioning technology. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, satellite, if the asset is exposed to the, to the sky, uh, sometimes uh, local, uh, like a Wi-Fi or cellular, and sometimes uh, other technologies that we are working on right. to enable this uh, location anywhere. Continuing on that, so there is significant uh, interest in NTN. Can you talk about your view on NTN on with the new 3 GPP releases? Yeah, absolutely. We um, we've been developing NTN for mm -hmm. uh, four or five years already, uh, and maybe maybe the first to be deployed commercially on, on a non-mobile uh, device. So we have a lot of experience in NTN, on the challenges in, in NTN. I think it's it's a very good you know, augmenting, you know, augment uh, technology that can augment the existing uh, positioning technology. It has some limitations, obviously. Uh, positioning and, and communication, sorry, communication uh, technologies. Um, we see many use cases that uh, uh, can be enabled by, by NTN. It will take a little bit more time uh, technology is getting more and more mature, you know, Geo and now Leo, yep. but also on the business side, there are some aspects to be handled. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a, it's a nice augmenting technology for the other communication uh, stuff that we have over there. That's fascinating. Uh, since we are at MWC and we walked on the booth and every booth has AI written on them. So what is your perspective of how uh, smart algorithms or AI can add value? I know you have been working on that, but you don't advertise it much. So right. Uh, so we embed AI in two aspects of our product. Uh, one is on the lower levels of the of the device of the semiconductor, specifically on the physical layer and some of the other stuff. Uh, and we also test the algorithms that we develop against uh, data driven algorithms AI. Yeah. That's a one aspect. And on the other side is we provide our customers ability to run an AI inference algorithms on the application side, on, on our microcontroller. So if they have a data-driven algorithm that they want to run on the on our microcontroller, mm -hmm. they can do that with, our, with the offering that we provide to them. That's brilliant. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. For thank you. Having, and, and thank you for the conversation. Thank you much. Thank very you. Very insightful. Thank you. Yep.